Hello everyone. I've um, come back to the storage unit to put the car away for a month or so. Uh, let me tell you how we ended up. Um First thing to say is this clutch problem has been extremely irritating. Uh, we're now on our one, two, third clutch since the one that we put in it originally uh, started slipping, and these things start slipping just because um, you know, they wear out as they do on road cars. It's just on race cars, especially ones a lot are they wear out much quicker. And the usual 60, 70 thousand miles that you get out of um, you know, road car uh, version. Uh, still, I think we did really well to get it to last as long as it did. It was about two and a half seasons, which is, um, which is really good. Now, uh, yeah, replacing a clutch on a race car is not an unusual thing to do. And um, yeah, sometimes you have to do it every every season. Depends how it depends how good the clutch is, and depends how hard you use it, and what car it is, and all that kind of stuff. Uh, so uh, normally, when things like a clutch wear out, you just uh, ring up the people who supplies you the clutch, get it on, put it in the car, and everything will be good. This is exactly what we did. Oh, I need to put some oil on these hinges. Uh, right, so exactly what we did. Trouble is, we put that in the car and it didn't work. It just kept slipping. It was exactly what we did. We got the new clutch came in, we um, put it in a car, um, uh, thought, what? Well, it's a lightweight replacement. Didn't test it, turned out to Snetson, and well, as you saw, the thing slipped. And not a little bit, it slipped by miles. Absolutely, you know, I think at most you can do 30% throttle, which is, which is ridiculous. Um, and then, you know, obviously disappointed, um, asked the supplier to send, send us another one, which they did, and put that in the car and didn't even bother taking it to the track this time. Straight away again. Um, the supplier swears blind that the specification of the clutch is the same as the one we got originally. But clearly it isn't and it wasn't. And they either don't know what they're doing or they're lying to us. And I'm not sure. I'm not sure which one that is. So uh, luckily John found a, a new company. Uh, whose name I don't actually know, uh, but I'll put it on the screen. And what, uh, we sent sent them the assembly, and they tested the uh, strength of the, uh, the clamping force of the clutch and said, you know, there's no way it's going to do more than three, uh, which is exactly what we found. And um, uh, offered to make us a effectively a, a, a prototype um, a, a clutch plate for the springs for the Lancia. I think they intend to sell it to other people as well who want a, a single plate clutch. It's not like a, a one-off for us, but um, yeah, we're definitely the guinea pig for it. Uh, so that's now in the car. And John, John took it for a ride, uh, try, sorry. Um, uh, when the clutch was fitted and it didn't slip. But, but uh, driving a car up the road and then thrashing it for an hour around a track are two very different things. And uh, this being just post lockdown, all this pent up demand 
for track day still hasn't shaken itself out. So we weren't actually able to get a track day until kind of the middle of October. Uh, so that's where we are. I'm putting the car away. Um, I, don't, I don't leave it in the van. So I'm putting the car away back in the storage unit uh, until mid October. And then we should take it to the track, give it a thrash, see if we've got a clutch that can uh, deal with the power now. I uh, also forgot to mention we lost some glass out of that headlight. So that one really just got this crack in it, which uh, was caused by a stone being flung up or going through the gravel or something like that. So uh, we're going to get a new, um, new set of lenses and uh, get them back to the former glory as well. Well hello all, here we are again, getting ready for another test. Just been um, servicing the road car and now it's time to get, um, get the van out of its hiding place. Here it is. Um, load up the car. You probably can't hear a word I'm saying because it's October weather and um, really windy. So um, I've got a few jobs to do on the plant too before I load it up, including um, <laughs> including stickers, uh, getting rid of some cosmetic stuff really, a bit of uh, sticker residue. Uh, I'm going to put the Lancia badge back on after it fell off and stuff like that. So, um, I'll um, catch you a bit. Good eye all. So what lovely weather we're having. Let me clean the uh, lens. This thing down the rain here. Uh, it's actually quite light uh, at the minute. It was um, really bad earlier. So, um, car's looking good. Got the wheels back on, took it off the jacks. Plugged the ECU back in. Got the steering wheel back on. And it's all ready to fire up. Ooh. There's always a bit of a squeeze in here. Let me, uh, that's better. We've got the camera around the right way now. So this is the um, master switch down here. And then it really comes to life. It's not a gear. Turn the ignition on. You can hear the uh, fuel pumps and everything. And then give it a crank. Whoops, wrong button. There's fuel pressure, and this one's oil pressure. That's pretty normal. This is the engine temp, oil temp, which doesn't work, and uh, fuel pressure and oil pressure. And that's the amount of fuel it needs that we got. It's actually got uh, a few more modes as well. This dash. Uh, this is the uh, race mode. Where we've got the engine temperature and the boost control. It keeps splitting back to this while the engine's uh, cold. And then I've got the uh, practice mode, which gives you uh, lap times and boost. Uh, but I don't tend to use that because um, for some reason it doesn't. Uh, uh, it doesn't seem to register the lap time. That, that here is the same as this down there. Because when I'm strapped in and got the helmet on and everything, I can't actually see that at all. Uh, so this is a reminder of what everything looks like. And then here, uh, this, this unit here uh, tells you how well you're doing with it to lap time and everything. 
to that turn, so you're really up and down on your lap. And then up here, you've got the air conditioning controls, which are on or off. And there's um, four of them. And um, yeah, that's about it. So let's get this car um, loaded up. Oh, there was one uh, one control I did uh, forgot to show you. Uh, so as you can see there, the brake pedal, the bottom of the brake pedal, where my feet is just about pointing to. Is that red wire? And that red wire winds all the way back to this knob here. And this is just the bias for the back. Uh, it's not got any clips, uh, which is a bit annoying. It's, um, uh, so it's hard to tell where you are. And then down there is Fibes, Dinner Shirt, Stopwatch and GoPro, which you have to do all by hand. We were going to try and create a dash here, but uh, we don't have any of this. I uh, wanted to keep it quite free. Um, so yeah, it's all down there. So yeah, that's the office. Oh, and here, here is the high-tech adjustment, which is just Velcro wrapped around the roll bar. And that's how you um, adjust the uh, flap at the front on the roof up or down. And then um, big mirror. And that is a pretty good um, view, a representation of the view that you can see out the back. And that is what you can see out the side mirror, which is, um, yes, absolutely nothing. And then if we shut the door, that is what you can see out the side mirror. Yeah, just about that, which is um, just as rubbish. Door handle and um, door strap. And here's the view of the steering wheel. Uh, so here, this button here is the pit limiter button, which keeps the car at 60 kilometers an hour. And the number on the bottom right hand corner tells you how fast you're going. And this button here flashes the headlights automatically, so you don't need to hold it. You just push it once and it flashes. So not flashing, push it once and now it flashes. And that's the courage people in front to get out of the way. Hello everyone. We're here at our favourite circuit. Well, Closest anyway at uh, Snetterton. Uh, we're using the 300 uh, circuit configuration today. Uh, got John, whoops, sorry about that. We got John uh, warming up the car already. Um, if the, they give the uh, bit tape over the he headlight lamp, we had uh, just pushing the car around in the uh, garage and it just fell out and smashed on the floor. So we've got to get a new one of them. Uh, weather's looking good. You can see uh, it did forecast rain, but it might rain this afternoon. But it's looking all right for this morning. Tracks a bit, tracks a bit damp. Um, we're already here to test the clutch to get the car nice and warm, and then um, start seeing whether we got any slip and then start adding some power and we'll go from there.
end of the day. And um, good news, we have a clutch that doesn't slip, which is fantastic. Um, instead, we have a clutch that drags. Uh, but we've got a new bracket. Do you want to whip the bonnet off, John? Sorry? Show the bracket. Yeah, so we've got a bracket that uh, was specially made to hold the slave cylinder. Um, here, this bracket. So when you push the clutch in, now because the clutch is really stiff, uh, this actually bends. And um, we're getting a tiny bit of clutch drag. I mean, it's not, it's not very big and it's perfectly drivable, but you don't want to go in traffic. Not that they say that gets in traffic. Uh, and other than that, the car was great, wasn't it, John? At last! Yeah. Got a clutch! Thanks right. to the clutch man. What a job. We've got a clutch and the um, car behaves itself. <laughs> yeah. We've got to fix the uh, light. And then Do a new, new oil seal for the cap. And you yeah, a bit, a bit leaky out of that. <coughs> and then um, we're good to go. Yeah. Got a few weeks till uh, Silverstone, so. Um, Fingers crossed. Will you go well? Catch you later.